Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God 
forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to any as had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response from the Psalms will be said in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the shadow of the shadow of death, I shall fill you with evil, for you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup was running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday, every year, fourth Sunday of Easter, is always Good Shepherd Sunday. We hear different scriptures that talk about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd, of course, goes all the way back in religious history to King David, who was a shepherd before he was called by God to become king of Israel. And God promised that one day one of his descendants would become the king who would rule over Israel forever. The earliest image of Jesus that we have in art, the very first picture ever painted, at least that survives, is in the catacombs in Rome. It was a woman named Donatilla, and she had a painting of Jesus in her tomb, and it is the Good Shepherd, Jesus holding a lamb with two sheep on either side of him. So we know that this image of Jesus was precious to the very first Christians, and it has been that way ever since, which is kind of funny if you think about it. Because if I did a survey today, how many of you spent last night out in the fields sleeping with your sheep? Show of hands. <laughs> Any shepherds? We're kind of removed from shepherds, aren't we? Like, agribusiness is a whole thing, but we don't spend a lot of time with sheep. We're not around shepherds very often. It was different when I lived in Wales for a year. There were more sheep than people in Wales, and you would see shepherds out in the field. True also when we visited the Holy Land, you would occasionally see shepherds out there as well. And I was learning about ancient shepherds in the time of Jesus that the shepherd would actually spend all day and all night with the sheep. The shepherd's job was to protect the sheep, to lead them to good pasture, and to fend off any enemies. And so there would be a little enclosure at night for the sheep to be in, and the shepherd would lay down in the entrance to that gate and be the physical, literal gate for the sheep, protecting them from wolves or thieves or other predators. The other thing I learned, which I didn't know, is that, uh, again, in the ancient world, you know, in the Holy Land, water was scarce. And so when there was a, a watering hole or a place for fresh water, all the shepherds would bring all their sheep to the same watering hole. And you can imagine the chaos, all these sheep are milling around, you can't tell one from another. Sometimes they marked them with different colors, but it was just a mess. But the only way the shepherds could get their sheep back and know they had the right sheep is that the sheep knew the unique call of the shepherd. Each shepherd had their own special call, and when their sheep heard that call, they would follow the shepherd. When it was time to leave, a special whistle or a call and the right sheep would follow the right shepherd. Kind of amazing. Made me think of one of my favorite movies from some years ago. Many of you are probably too young to remember this movie, but uh, the movie Babe. Anybody see the movie Babe? Oh, yes. Great family movie. And it's kind of about shepherding, really. It's about uh, sheepdog trials. I think it took, takes place in Australia. And there's a competition to train sheepdogs to herd the sheep. And some of these sheepdogs are amazing. If you've ever watched sheepdog trials, these dogs are incredibly brilliant and can organize the sheep and get them going the right way. Well, the movie is a wonderful little uh, parable and it, it takes place 
with a hero who is a pig, who wants to be a sheepdog, <laughs> and wants to herd the sheep. Later on, he finds out what usually happens to pigs when they get fat up, and it probably motivates him even more. But Babe works with the farmer, and he's trying to become a sheepdog, but the problem is the sheep won't listen to this strange pig. They won't listen until one of the sheep lets Babe in on the secret. There's a secret code that if the pig knows the code, then the sheep will follow. And the code, if you watch the movie, is Ba Ram You. Isn't that it? Something like that? Ba Ram You. Once Babe learns the code, all the sheep follow, and Babe becomes an award winning sheepdog pig. <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> I urge you to watch it. It's, it's really fun. Um, now, the great thing for us as Christians is there is no secret code. The call that Jesus issues is not just for some, it's for everyone. The sheepfold is big enough to include all of us, everyone who is made in the image of God, everyone that God loves. Jesus' call is for everyone, and he is the gate for all, not to keep them out, but to welcome them in, to nurture and protect and feed and guide them. Jesus is all of our good shepherd. But we, as followers of Jesus, as sheep, my wife really resents being called a sheep, by the way. She doesn't like that image for us as people. Sheep are stupid. They just herd around and follow. But instead, we are also called to be shepherds as well. Right? As Christians, we not only follow Jesus, the Good Shepherd, but He empowers us to be shepherds ourselves, to follow in His example by nurturing, feeding, and guiding others. Your scouts know that pretty well, right? The role of a scout leader, of a scout master, is to be a shepherd, to help, to guide, to feed, and to sustain the scouts that are in your charge. And you as scouts are learning leadership through everything that you do, all of your activities, you are gaining skills. Look at all the badges and awards that you guys have. It's amazing. It's awesome. Each one of those represents significant growth towards becoming not just a follower, but a leader as well. We as Christians, I think, have that same vocation to try our best to become faithful and reliable shepherds. Jesus said, don't be like the, the false ones, right? We're just there to steal and kill and destroy. Your job is to be faithful, to sustain and nurture others. A little bit later, we're going to be blessing and saying farewell to Leo and Jan. And I was thinking about them and this vocation of shepherding. One of Leo's vocations here, he's had many, but senior warden who's been in the choir, well, my favorite one was that every Monday, Thursday, when we would have our all-night prayer vigil, Leo would be the shepherd. He would come and spend the whole night. I don't know how many years he did that. Many, many years. Because he wanted anyone coming to pray in the middle of the night to know that they were safe. He was the gate for the sheep in that regard, right? Making a safe pasture so that we would have a place to pray. And I think about Jan, who every once in a while would give me a call and say, Father Eric, have you visited so-and-so? Because they need special prayers. Jan has been one of our prayer warriors, nurturing and caring for all her fellow sheep in this congregation. And I wanna to say to both of you, we're gonna miss you a lot. Yeah. I could bore you all by going through many, many of our parishioners and the different ways that they are living out their vocation as shepherds. I got to spend yesterday with our youth confirmation class and the exceptional shepherds in Jane and Kathy that that class has and has had for many years. That is part of our core calling as Christians, to try to do our best to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, to be his sheep, 
but also to grow into becoming shepherds in the best way that we can, faithfully, humbly, obediently, caring for others in the name of Christ. <clears throat> Unlike Babe, we don't need a secret code for that. The code has been unlocked for all of us, and it is our baptism into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The gift of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to grow as leaders and servants, as servant leaders, which to me is the best image of shepherding that I can think of. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we're so thankful for our uh, privilege of sponsoring scouts. We're so blessed with the number of people in this church who take seriously their commitment to be shepherds. And I pray that each of us can hear amidst all the noise of this world more and more clearly the voice of the shepherd Jesus who says, follow me, follow me, and I will lead you to green pastures, to still waters, to abundant and eternal life with God and one another. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I invite you as you're able now to stand. We affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Wendell and Stewart, our retired bishops, and Eric and John, our priests, Lutheran bishops, Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig. For our diocesan household, remembering especially Christ Church and Adrian, in the Dominican Republic, Moises, their bishop, St. Stephen's in San Pedro, and Nativity Church in Sal Salcedo, that together we may be signs of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, of hope for all who know pain and suffering, and of love for all who have been rejected. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. For Joe, our president, Gretchen, our governor, the Congress and the Supreme Court, and all our local elected officials. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. We remember especially the people of Ukraine, Turkey, and Syria. Let us pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish family, gathered to eat and drink with the risen Lord, 
that we may be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love for God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and for those preparing for confirmation, <clears throat> that they may always keep the light of Christ burning in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For our service men and women, especially Ryan, Ryan Trace, Trace, Stephanie, Stephanie Dylan, Dylan, Matthew, Matthew Dan, Dan, and Preston. Preston. And for first responders, for peace in the world and for all those who live in places of war, violence, and unrest, that with all God's people, they may live in freedom and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord hear our we pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely, for those commended to our prayers, especially Daniel, Daniel Renee, Renee, Margaret, Merv, Rose, and Robin, Sylvia, George, Catherine, Gregory, John and Virginia, Elise, Rob and Sue, Wilma, Leo and Jan, Jim, David and Karen, Mary Jane, Sarah, Henry and Sheila, Jane, Ethan, and those we name now. Let us pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for those we name now. May they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with blessed Philip and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ. Let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Alleluia. To you, O Lord, we give praise and glory. Tomorrow is St. Philip's Day, and so we pray, Almighty God, who gave to your Apostle Philip grace and strength to bear witness to the truth, grant that we, being mindful of their victory of faith, may glorify in life and death the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another. In addition to the names in the bulletin and Michelle, is there, are there any other birthdays and anniversaries this week? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in you we live and move and have our being. Your love gives us life and sustains all of our relationships. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they remember and celebrate all the anniversaries of their lives, including their birth, baptism, marriage, ordination, and others, especially Tom, Thomas, and Bill, and Michelle. Sustain them with your bountiful spirit and grant them the grace to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart in this life and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. I want to invite the uh, scout leaders to come up. And in fact, all the scouts, why don't you come up to the middle here? The scout leaders can join me up on top here. Tell us about your troops. You guys can fill it all the way over here. All the way. There we go. For uh, many years, we have sponsored Cub Scout Pack 195 and Boy Scout Troop 40. Uh, this past year, we have added two new troops. And tell us about yourselves. 
Go ahead, correct it. All right. And I go for more. Yeah. It's just because I'm here as well. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to share my name is Frank Barkas. I'm going to share two one two three. And we're going to be here at the Mississippi Board Church. I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to do that. I'm also a committee member of 240, who has been speaking here for many years. And it's a great to be here, and thank you for your hospitality. community for many years. We give you thanks for camping and outdoor adventures to teach us that the world is our great home, for study and work to build character, for service to see our responsibility for those in need, for encouragement in genuine patriotism and vital faith. Bless the work of scouting in this place here at St. Philip's and around the world. But through its efforts, these young men and women may, like our Lord, increase in wisdom and in stature and in love with you and all people. We pray for continued safety and growth for scouts and leaders, their families, friends, and all who may be influenced and impacted by this program. We pray for continued support from this congregation here at St. Philip's, that each and every scout may consider this community a place of welcome and love. We thank you for your calling to serve the least of these, and in so doing, discover ourselves in your image of grace and love. Amen. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. We're so glad you're here for Scout Sunday. You are very welcome to stay for communion. If you don't want to, you can leave with our blessing. So decide what you want to do. Stay at all. Thank you. I want to also say a thank you to Ken Zadral, who has been our parish liaison for scouting for 150 years, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks much younger, I guess. <laughs> and now, I've been dreading this, but I'd like to call Leo and Jan up to the middle for a special place. <laughs> So tell us how when did you join St. Phillips? Uh, 2006? We came in 2006, shortly after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We came for five years. Five years? That was <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. Well, as I mentioned in the sermon, we all of us are so grateful for your presence here and in many ways that your ministry has impacted the life of this church and the wider community. Now we want to send you forth with our blessing. We can travel to it as a brass band, yes. just to be close to your daughter Megan. Um, ask your God's blessing on her as well. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fellowship of faith and community, for all those who sacrifice of time and talent and treasure makes this such a joyful place to be. We thank you especially today for these your servants, Leo and Jan. The many ways in which their ministry has enriched this community, blessed us with their prayers and presence, their gifts of an energy and skill. And as they say farewell to us and we to them, we know, Lord, that you hold us all in the palm of your hand, and that for Christians there is no true goodbye, but only we'll see you soon. Go now with our blessing. Blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the blessing of this community, our continued love and prayers and community. Amen. And Jan's chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Thank you.
I invite everyone, if you're uh, able, to come to the reception after the service, a chance to greet uh, Leo and Jan and to share with them uh, what they mean to us and to wish them Godspeed. A couple other announcements. This afternoon, the ECW is hosting a special spring tea at 4 p.m. The guest speaker will be our own Brianne Terzinski, who's going to talk about her book and sign copies of it, A History of Pole Town. Uh, should be a wonderful time. All are welcome at 4 p.m., uh, men and women and children. Dogs probably too, I don't know. Uh, we have two opportunities for fellowship this week. Uh, tomorrow, May 1st, the uh, ladies luncheon group is meeting at Panera at 11.30 a.m. And then on Thursday, our monthly birthday luncheon group, which you don't have to be celebrating a birthday to come to, it's open to anybody, that will be taking place at Bravo in the village on Rochester Hills at noon on Thursday. And then next Sunday, a very special forum with Katie Knorr, who is the relatively new owner with her husband Dietrich of Give Thanks Bakery. We are gonna have an amazing assortment of pastries from Give Thanks Bakery at coffee hour next week. That's a lure. And then Katie's gonna speak uh, briefly about her work as an entrepreneur and as someone who wants to give back to the community. So uh, that's sponsored by our plan giving uh, committee at church. We hope you can all join us. And then we hope also those who are interested will join readers of 100 Romeo Street as they meet to discuss C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce. You can also sign up on the bulletin board for the Mother's Day brunch, which is coming up, and for our STP groups, our foyer groups, which will be starting soon. Lots of ways to have fellowship and community here. Sign up for all of it. Why pick one? Do it all. That's what I suggest. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink 
of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All uh, baptized Christians of any denomination are welcome to come forward to receive communion. It will be directed by the ushers going to come forward. At this church, we are currently taking the bread, and then if you wish, you can dip the bread in a shallow bowl of wine. <coughs>
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Now, Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.